I got a call from from a friend of mine. Yo, Camille, yo, did you see Luna? Did, did you saw? What the f are you talking about? He said, bro, you're in a whole different roller coaster. Trust me, open up Training View. Welcome everyone to the Words of Wisdom podcast. We're back once again. The fastest growing and the biggest podcast in the trading space. That's thanks to all of you and our wonderful guests. Talking of guests, we have an incredible guest with us today. Someone who was put onto my radar just a few days ago and we thought, well, we're both in Dubai, let's get it done. The one, the only Mr. Trading Wizard, Camille. Thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for me. My pleasure. And um, yeah, we just connected a couple of days ago. I know yeah. you were with my good friend uh, Riz Sada as well. Exactly. Um, so I even said to him, like, what did you think? What did you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we haven't had many crypto uh, yeah. traders or investors on the podcast. So yeah. you're the first. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, how we like to start is just a brief story or you know, brief or as long as you want of how you got to where you are today. And then from there, we just take it from there. Oh, fine. Yeah, I think mine is very different if you look at it from... Uh, the typical trading story. Mm -hmm. So especially on social media and everything, everyone will tell you, yeah, I, I was very broke when I started and mm -hmm. all of the things like the hero stories. Mm -hmm. For me, it was kind of different. When I was 16, I was uh, I started in door to door sales. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then when I uh, became 17, I became a sales manager. Wow. So cool. I earned around six to eight K a month in sales already. So for me, I, I, I didn't start without money, mm -hmm. like, like many people did. Um, so I was 17, had some money, and I was like, okay, I want to do something with the money, mm -hmm. you know, not, not only just spending it. And when you're 17, I, I don't know, it, it was hard to spend it. Mm -hmm. Like 7K is a lot of money. Um, so I was like, okay, I need to do something with what sounds smart? Stocks. Stocks sounded like the smart option. I mm -hmm. didn't know anything about it, but mm -hmm. when I saw it in the movies and everything, I saw, okay, rich people, they, they do stocks. Yeah. So for me, it was like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm mm -hmm. going to look at, at the whole stocks thing. Um, open up YouTube. How does it work? What are stocks? Everything. Mm -hmm. Then my father, back in the days, they, he, he, he was already talking a lot about crypto. And I, and I, and I looked at crypto, but mm -hmm. I, I was, was like, no, it's a bit too risky. Mm -hmm. Because everyone says, yeah, crypto is risky, risky. So I thought, no, stocks, I'm the smart guy here. Mm -hmm. I'm going into stocks. Mm -hmm. So went into stocks and I would, I will call it luck. Uh, I made some very decent r returns in the stock market in oh, the wow. beginning, mm -hmm. but it was just by, to be honest, it was pure gambling. It was just, I put it in, I saw it on YouTube, some random influencer said, this one is going to pop off. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I felt, felt very, very smart. And then, um, and then I thought like, like if, if I looked at the time period, I was like, okay, this was going so fast. Mm -hmm. Then I looked more into the, the, the whole crypto side because my father said, just do it. Mm -hmm. So I did that and then um, it went even crazier. So the returns on the crypto things that, that I was doing were even crazier than, than the stock returns. Um, so I said to myself, you know what? If this is really going to pay you more than you are knocking on doors because mm -hmm. I was a bit done with knocking on doors, then you're just go going to switch and, and, and go all in. Then I realized, listen, um, there must be something going on right now. How, how can you make so much money without actually knowing about it? Mm. Did some more research about the whole market structure thing and everything. And then I saw, okay, so the market's going in an uptrend right now. Mm -hmm. So as an investor, you can make money. But then I was like, okay, what am I going to do when the market goes down? Yeah. Did it know about shorting, everything. So I was like, okay, how, what is that play? Then I looked into trading. Mm -hmm. Then the, 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 the whole new wor world for me opened. I don't know. Yeah. You must know baby pips. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did some crazy hours behind baby pips. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just opened it up and I was like, okay, I need to learn about this. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's that's how it, how it all started for me. Um, first of all, my first trade is a bit of a weird story. I don't know. How's your first trade? Was it good or my or? first trade was good? Yeah. It was a gamble. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, mine was on a, a thousand pound account. Yeah. Um, in Brexit was happening. Yeah. You know, Brexit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I the sentiment in the UK was that Brexit was going to happen. Like we were going to vote for Brexit. So I yeah. thought this must be bad for the pound. So it was a gamble. Yeah. But it was kind of like an educated guess. <laughs> um, and I shorted the pound, <coughs> pound dollar. Yeah. And uh, I set a TP and everything. So like this trade got me forty percent on the hundred. Uh, one thousand pound account. I don't even know how much I was risking because yeah. literally, when I say it's my first trade, it was like a couple two months into my trading journey. <laughs> yeah. So like, I literally didn't know about like loss sizes, risk, and all this. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I made four hundred pound, and I thought, whoa, this this is the easiest thing ever. <laughs> I like lost and blew that account like two you know, two weeks later or something. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it always happens. First, the beginner's luck, and yeah, then the real lessons. That's come. it. Yeah, yeah. No, for me, um, like I said, I I knew how spot work it mm -hmm. worked before. But of course, <coughs> you have the whole futures thing. Yeah. So I opened up Binance and uh, I, I loaded my, my account up with 14K. Wow. And like I said, I had some money to play with. Yeah. 14K on the account. And then I wanted to, to buy the futures thing. Didn't know what futures were. Mm -hmm. It just sounded like the next big thing. Yeah. yeah. Because there, there I, I saw the short button. Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, that's something I want to learn. <laughs> so what happened? When I clicked on it, Binance said, listen, you first need to do a test before you're going to do yeah. this. Huh. I was like, listen, guys, I'm smart enough. I don't need the whole test. So I just went to Google how to finish the Binance test. <laughs> and just give me the answers. Yeah. Boom. Answers were there. Just multiple choice. All of the questions. Didn't read it. I, I didn't read, read all of the questions. It, I just filled them in, mm -hmm. what I saw from uh, Google. So then, okay. Next thing. Like I said, um, in crypto, it's different. We don't work with lot sizes. We mm. just put in the full amount. Yeah. So for me, I didn't know anything about risk management. I didn't know what a stop loss was. I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, okay, now I just want to short the market. Mm -hmm. So full account, 14K, boom. But I thought that 100X meant just going in with, with everything. Yeah. So by, by accident, I clicked on, on, on 100x because I thought that's the way to go all in. Then I saw some percentage thing. I thought, yeah, yeah, 100%, I will go in. I thought that's, that's fine. So I entered the trade and literally closed my laptop, went, went to my kitchen, cooking dinner. Two minutes later, literally two minutes, liquidation notice. I was like, what is, what is a liquidation? <laughs> really didn't know what the liquidation was. So I called a friend of mine. I said, listen, you, you, you know a bit about trading, right? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. What is liquidation? He said, oh no, <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> what have you done? I said, bro, I don't know, mm -hmm. but I got a, a notice from Binance liquidation. Mm -hmm. He said, please open up your account. I said, do I want to? <laughs> <laughs> do I want to open up the account? Boom, zero dollars, just, just nothing. I was looking at it, I was like, Maybe that Binance test. Now I understand why you first need yeah, to do a yeah. test. <laughs> but there, there comes one of the biggest things that I want to, to say to people, especially in the beginning of mm -hmm. trading. Um, I don't care what everyone says, says to you, but I would always re recommend you to start trading mm -hmm. with a decent income bef of before course, you're yeah. starting. Mm -hmm. I knew, okay, next month new money is coming in mm -hmm. and I can start understanding, uh, uh, just understanding the game more. Mm -hmm. What did I know? I lost 14K, someone else won my my money. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, someone else just made a big bag. Okay, of course I, I, I've i lost, but one day I will be on the other side of the table. So yeah. let, let me learn more about this. Mm -hmm. Boom, opened up baby pips again. <laughs> I was like, okay, maybe I need to le learn a, a little bit more because that whole trade was based on just the, just the, the EMA cross. Yeah. That was the only thing that, that looked a bit simple because it said simple moving average. Mm -hmm. I was like, boom, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I was like, let me open it once more. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's that's how my, my, my journey started. Yeah. Um, then first I was a Fibonacci trader. Yes. And afterwards I became a range trader. Mm -hmm. So first, um, why did I become a, a Fibonacci trader? Because in... A trending market, in my opinion, Fibonacci, for me, it worked very, very well. Mm -hmm. And then the market switched. Mm -hmm. And what you probably know is your your trading style in every market needs to be adjusted a little bit. Yes. So when the market switched, I got my first losing month and I was like, oh, no. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> oh no, there there goes my dream. I like the first couple of months, my 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 old strategy was making profits like crazy. It worked. I was happy, and then the market switched to 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 a sideways market. Didn't did it work anymore? Then I was uh, opening up Twitter, mm-hmm. and then I saw two guys, Trader SC and Trader XO. Yeah. Do you know them? I think I've heard of SC, yeah. um, but XO, I don't think so. Okay. If you the only crypto this, one I know is Trader Main. Trader uh, Main, yeah, 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 yeah. No, for Trader SC and Trader XO, if mm-hmm. they ever watch this, thank you, because they introduced me to range trading, mm-hmm. and that, that, that literally changed my whole life, because now... Fib- the Fibonacci levels in, in the beginning for me, it was just more on the long side. So how yeah. to long. Mm-hmm. When I saw the whole range trading part in the beginning, I got very angry because I saw his tweet from, from, from Trader SC mm-hmm. and he was very bearish. And I just went in a long and I was like, he must be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he is on the wrong side. Boom. He was exactly right. I was like, okay, eh? it was just luck. Let me just do, do my strategy once again and see what he does. Boom, he was bearish again. I was bullish. He won again. And then I was like, okay, maybe I need to learn something from him because mm-hmm. he he did it w- way many more times than me right now. Mm-hmm. So that's when I just started looking into the whole range trading thing. That's mm-hmm. that's how it went. And that's where you got to where you are now. Exactly. So <coughs> let's uh, let's just go back a little bit yeah. in, in regards to the sales, right? Yeah. So I really want to touch on that because you know you did, you didn't, uh, you said you did it at sixteen, right? Yeah. So you, I guess you didn't go college or university. Uh, no, no, ju- ju- just high school. Yeah. And that's that's the whole thing. When I was in high school, mm-hmm. it already uh, it it was becoming a problem for me mm. because I was earning uh, yeah, I don't want to sound cocky, but but way more than my um, teachers. Yeah. And, and I was like, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. It's, it's going so well. Uh, can can we arrange something? Mm-hmm. Then my school said, you you know what? Show us that, that you're really doing this and we can fix something w- with your time schedule. Oh, okay. So that's that that's how it went. And, and from there on, yeah. Just so you started when you were at high school? Yeah. The sales job. And yeah. So why sales though? Cause sales, I agree. I, like, I did sales job. I didn't go college or university. I didn't mm-hmm. start that young. Yeah. Uh, I think I started 17 ish. It's mm-hmm. uh, so not too far off. But sales jobs to me are the best jobs almost to get. 100%. Um, if you don't have a degree or anything like that. Because in terms of pay, you can really accelerate if yeah. you're good at it. Yeah. But it's also one of the hardest jobs, 100%. right? Because especially door to door. I never did door to door. Yeah. Because that's a different level. Yeah. I never did outbound either calls. Yeah. Because that's another level as well. Yeah. yeah I always yeah. just did the easy one, the inbound oh, calls. People, go, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. people come into yeah. you and you're just like having to sell them. Yeah. Uh, but even then, sell them, sell yeah, exactly. But the skill set <laughs> yeah. is, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like the skill set is. You know, you can't put a price on it. It's something that can stick with you and help you for life. The best lesson um, you can learn. So why, why sales at 16? Okay, f- so for me... Let's take a break for a minute there, guys, because I want to tell you about our other sponsor, Trade Zella. Now, Trade Zella is something I only wished I had during my journey because I would have saved myself so much time and more importantly, money. Because Trade Zella is the greatest automated journaling software on the market. That's right automated. All you have to do is connect your MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5, and it will pull up all of your data with all your statistics. It goes so in depth from obviously your losses, the days, the times. It allows you to bar replay so you can actually see that trade as if it was live. Absolutely incredible. It's an absolute game changer for everyone's trading journey. Without data, how can you make a statistical edge? I went through so much time without collecting data, without journaling. And why was that? Because most people find journaling very tedious when in reality, why not have it automated and all done for you? All you do is just add the notes. As part of TradeZella, you also have playbooks. So if you have different entry drills, you can list them all out so you can categorize your trades. TradeZella is for everyone, whether you trade options, whether you trade Forex, whether you trade prop firms, or even just your own personal account. It is here to revolutionize the trading journey. Make sure you click the link in the description below and use the code RIZ10 for 10% off. Go take a look at the link in the description. Let's get back to the episode. When I was uh, younger than, than 16, I did some way different things. Mm-hmm. I thought uh, like like the, the, the whole picture of being a gangster, loved it, <laughs> loved it. Mm-hmm. I, I come from Amsterdam, I, 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 I just loved everything of it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what happened? A, a good family friend of mine, mm-hmm. he came up to me and he really saw that I, w- I was doing some, some 
not very nice things. Mm -hmm. So he came up to me and he was like, listen, he, he dragged me by the ear and he was like, you have a lot of HDHD, your talk is great. You come work at my company right now. I was like, no, do you know who I am? I'm the... I'm the gangster. And he was like, just try it one day. Mm -hmm. So then the, f then the first day out there, they, they, they always start in this kind of boiler room thing where, mm -hmm. where they're going to hype up each other. Mm -hmm. So the first day I was sitting there and on average, people uh, made, made around three to four sales a day. Mm -hmm. So they asked everyone like, yeah, okay. Um, how much are, are you going to, to make today? And even manager said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going for, for three to four. And then they asked me and it was my first day. I was looking around 12. And people were looking at me, what, what is this guy saying? 12, <laughs> it's his first day, 16 mm -hmm. year old, go away. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get 12. So everyone laughed and then I came back at the end of the day, I had four. I was so irritated. I was like, I felt, mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, tomorrow I'm, I'm, I, I'm here again. They said, you know, I'll find, we, we will see you tomorrow. So tomorrow, boiler room again. They said, listen, eh? now you know the game, <laughs> four, five, I said 12. And they were looking at me, oh, there he goes again. Mm -hmm. Boom, came, came back with eight still irritated but mm -hmm. but they were like whoa you you broke this already like weekly record oh i was like no i'm going straight home now see you tomorrow mm -hmm. and they were like what is this guy doing like because it's it's a thing in sales mm -hmm. after your day you're going to party going mm -hmm. to do all, all of the things for me i was so irritated with eight because i said 12. Mm -hmm. next day went in again boom finally 13. Wow. The, that that was for me like the the the, the game changer in, in sales. It was the, the constant um, battle w with myself. Like I mm -hmm. wanted more, more, more. And then at the end of the month, I saw okay, I earned like six times more than I did with a job that I can could could uh, be proud of and say to my family, listen, I made this money than mm -hmm. I did before that. Mm -hmm. So that was a big difference, and that's why I was doing give you this book by the way it's one of my favorite books i appreciate came, it man. came back from uh from that from that that period too um, this is what you, you read at the time no no just like this book this book goes about like, like that you oh, just the principles. always need yeah, yeah. just yeah, just, yeah. just think the 10x rule bigger. by grant Cardone. exactly so everyone can see we got it here <laughs> no i appreciate that a lot man i do i need to i need to be uh reading a lot more yeah i'm definitely gonna read this you never know this could be uh this could be the thing that yeah, pushes but the podcast one, to a new level. One thing, mm -hmm. and and that's really a life hack. Like like I have a lot a, a lot of ADHD for the people who probably noticed already. Mm -hmm. What the thing is, reading in the beginning was very hard for me mm -hmm. until I I, I um, started reading and listening at the same time. Okay. So now I listen to audio book. Yeah. And I read. Yeah. At the same time. So you follow it along. Exactly, and I I just always do it on two x speed. Okay. So, so it okay, yeah, yeah. goes a bit faster. But what what the biggest benefit is for me, for now, you'll probably have it too, the whole time management thing. Mm -hmm. Now I can exactly see, okay, if if I put it on, on 2x, the average book is around four hours. Yes. So what do I know? Okay, if I read one hour a day, I can finish the book easily in this week. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do right, right now. If I read, boom, just audio book, book, and I know, okay, this this week I'm going to finish this book. Mm -hmm. This week I'm going to finish this book. It's just for time management is way better. Do you feel like it keeps you engaged then? Hundred percent. Wow. Yeah. I never thought of that. You know. Yeah, it's. Very you might have just given everyone a hack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, that makes sense because I have. I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was younger. Mm -hmm. They wanted to put me on a uh, Ritalin or like this, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, this medication, yeah. but my mom said no. Yeah. Um, I've never like had it di you know, checked it up on it since. I know I have like low attention, mm -hmm. but I never thought of that because yeah, if I try and thing. read, I get, you know, you start like ghost reading. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, but the biggest problem is mm -hmm. e everyone now is, is reading on some motivational pages. Yeah, mm. Re read 10 pages a day. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, what happens if you read 10 pages a day? First of all, first you're going on your phone in in the night and then you're in the night. You know what? Oh yeah, wait, I need to still read 10 pages a day. Mm -hmm. Don't even know what you're reading. So ghost reading. Yeah. And then it takes you 30 days to finish the book. And I yeah. can tell you on day 20, you really don't know what you've read in, on, on the first day. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So in this way, just block one hour a day. And if you look on, on people, their phone on average, it's four hours. So just cut off one hour of your mm -hmm. phone scrolling, mm -hmm. take it in your book and you can easily finish one book a week. Mm -hmm. Because people always say, but how, how do you read so much? 
is heck. It's, mm-hmm. really, it's really good. I love it. No, I thank you for that. And I'm sure loads of people out there are going to be like, I never thought of that. <laughs> and I think it will help them a lot if they take action. But yeah. no, I love that. And so like the principles that you find in this book, obviously were principles, no doubt, that you were learning on the job, you know, yeah. in sales. So like, t- talk to me about that. Because obviously, you know, people, I know people to this day who are my age, for example, like 28, mm-hmm. 30s. I've seen people, 35, you know, 40s even in the, in the call center yeah. arena, which is completely different. People don't understand you. Yeah. People who haven't done sales, they won't get it. But like a call center has its, you know, sales in general has its uh, challenges, mm-hmm. right? And struggles. And yeah. there's a lot of uh, things you have to learn. It's a very competitive environment, very uh, stressful environment as well. Yeah. But door to door, is a whole different level. It's a whole right? different level. Whole yeah. different level. Because one, you're knocking I, I on someone's both. door. Yeah, yeah. But you're knocking on someone's door. You're yeah. disturbing them. And then you have to build rapport with them. And you have to try and sell them something at their exactly. door when they're like, I'm just about to eat dinner. Or I, I don't want you. Who are you? watching Netflix. Yeah. You are, there's no time when when you come and they are like, oh, yes. Yeah. Someone oh. is going to sell me something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Didn't happen before. <laughs> I can tell you. But like, how did you handle that at 16? Because that's yeah. a, you know, Normally, a lot of sixteen-year-olds and younger people are one. They're introverts. Two, they don't want to work anyway. They mm-hmm. don't. They want to be. They just have these you know, other fantasies, or they're playing video games, or whatever yeah. it may be, or they're just having fun because they are young. Yeah. So, where is the motivation, the drive to be able to not only work, Money. but then do door-to-door sales Money. and smash it? Money. Mm-hmm. That that for for me it was just money mm-hmm. because, uh, like I said, I did some some not very nice things before, mm-hmm. and it it was the 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 game where I said I'm I, I'm going to get 12 mm-hmm. because I knew okay if I really achieve 12 I earn this much amount in a day plus every manager inside of that company mm-hmm. boom like I don't know if I'm allowed to say this but eh, uh, you can say what you want don't worry I fucked them up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I they know. were like like yeah I'm I, I'm going for four and this new 16 year old kid he mm-hmm. fucks up a us up in 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 a week that was what what i wanted to do mm-hmm. and i knew okay huh? um in, in the beginning i wasn't focused on which lessons am i going to learn of course yeah. i was 16. Mm-hmm. for me it was okay if i make this money what am i going to do with the money mm. where am i going to eat which clothing am i go, going to get yeah that that was the thing in in the beginning mm-hmm. until i've reached a point where um i, I was knocking doors uh, it it was winter in the Netherlands, winter isn't very fun. It's only <laughs> raining. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, what you see on the pictures with all of the snow yeah, and yeah. the candles. No, it's mm. just raining. Every, everything's fucked. Um, so what happened? I um, my my motivation went down mm-hmm. and my sales went down too. Okay. So that's when I um, that that was my flip moment when I was like, okay, maybe I need to learn more about sales. Mm-hmm. And that's when the whole lessons came. Then I bought the book from. Um, it's called Never Split the Difference, I bought. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very, very, very good, good book. Um, Straight Line System from, from Jordan Belfort. Yeah, I read yeah. that, yeah. Went through all, all of the books, mm-hmm. implemented all of the lessons, and mm-hmm. then boom, sales went crazy again. And that's imagine, when I yeah. saw the power of books. Mm-hmm. No, definitely. And uh, <coughs> what's interesting with sales yeah. is it's very heavily reliant on like almost thinking in probabilities. Yeah. You know, it's like you get no, 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 no. Once yeah. you know your stats in terms of how many... Uh, say doors you knock on versus how many sales you make, mm-hmm. then you can start to trust the probabilities as long as you stick to the same system in terms of your rapport building, your sales pitch, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. So how did the sales aspect help your trading? Not only finance, obviously you got money coming in, mm-hmm. but also like the skill set of sales. Yeah. How did that translate into your trading? Um, to be honest, it was very different, especially mm-hmm. in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I'm very extroverted. Yeah. Trading is very alone, mm-hmm. especially when I started. Um, I wasn't very, very active on social media, mm-hmm. and I didn't knew anyone who was trading, mm-hmm. especially in, not in Amsterdam. D- didn't know anyone. I was the first one in my whole circle. Um, so in the beginning, it was just me behind baby pips. Mm-hmm. While one day I'm laughing at the doors, making fun, making money, all of the things. And the next day I'm losing 14 K when I'm, wor- <laughs> when I'm making, making my food, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, um, it switched. The first two months were, 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 um, I would say kind of depressing to, mm-hmm. to be honest, but I saw the bigger picture. So for me, it was literally, okay, now I'm learning 14 hours, baby pips. I'm behind trading few. Uh, I'm listening to this weird guy on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, it's instead of 
I can tell you, door-to-door sales, it's mm-hmm. fun. Mm-hmm. You, you, you go eat with people. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of fun conversations. Uh, it's very fun to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, you have some bad days too, but for me, I, I really liked it if, mm-hmm. if I look back at it. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the beginning, it was a bit depressing until I saw, okay, I need to make it a challenge for myself mm-hmm. because always when I make something a challenge, same with the 12, that's when it gets fun for me. Yeah. So that's when I said, okay, listen, Camille, what are you going to do? You don't know shit about trading yet. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure, load up your account with $100 mm-hmm. and try to um, earn yourself dinner tonight. Mm. So I said to myself, okay, uh, back then at the McDonald's, the, the, the hamburger was still one euro. <laughs> now it's one euro 50. <laughs> but back then it was one euro. Yeah. So I knew, okay, just 1% and I can al- already eat. Mm-hmm. Boom, in a loss, minus 10%. I was like, okay, how am I going to fix <laughs> this, you know? Yeah. But, 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 but with this challenge, literally I was trading until 4, 4 a.m., just, just seven, eight hours straight just to get, get that hamburger. And sometimes I, I, I even made, made, made more. And you have a sushi place in the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. It's called Sumo. Mm-hmm. That was 30 euros. Boom. One day I made 30 euros. I was like, now I can go, oh, oh you can eat sushi. That was the, the, the game that I made for myself. And it yeah. really worked. Mm. So, so I built like <coughs> a, you gamified the, the targets. You gamified the exactly. education aspect and yeah. the reward system. Yeah. Um, similar to obviously the sales side. Mm-hmm. Right. It's incredible. And is that something, I know that you have a group, right? Yeah. I think you have a group anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is that something you kind of implement into them as well? 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. How have you found that you know, translated to them then? So for me, it is very simple, um, especially in the beginning for, uh, for people who start with trading, they load up an account, mm-hmm. they see the profit. Mm-hmm. Because for me, I, I always say in the first uh, ho- half a year, ne- never load up your account mm-hmm. with more than a thousand dollars. Why? Because if you can't make uh, 10K from 1K, you won't make 100K from 10K. Mm-hmm. So first, first, show yourself that you're able to to flip your account 10 times if you're able to do it mm-hmm. fine yeah that's when you proved yourself but then you already have the 10k where you can fuck around and find out with mm-hmm. yeah so that's what i would say um why i said it, it in the beginning i would always recommend people to to have a job besides trading until uh, trading makes you more money for at least three to four months mm-hmm. i would say it gives you rest mm-hmm. so um what I did uh, a one-on-one student for me, for example. He said in, in the beginning to me, yeah, listen, I, I just made uh, 20 euros. How am I going to get groceries from this money? I said, bro, this is not, no, this is not supposed to be your grocery money. Mm. That's why you're working beside it. The whole trading game must be just for you. Learn and study this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Not grocery money, not Lamborghini money, not Dubai money, just learn the game yeah. first two years yeah. don't focus on all of the things mm-hmm. just make little challenges for yourself mm-hmm. until you've proved yourself that that you understand the game mm-hmm. he started with me when when he was already trading for three years okay but yeah. he wasn't profitable mm-hmm. yet so in the beginning for him it was very frustrating i said listen just give yourself some patience mm-hmm. now i sat down with him like like two months ago and and i was saying to him like listen if you look at your average loss r- 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 right now mm-hmm. How big is it compared to your grocery money or, or your 20 euros in the beginning? It mm-hmm. was like, no, it's multiple times the account that I started with. I mm-hmm. was like, exactly. And that's the, the whole patience thing. Mm-hmm. It's a compounding game. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, that's, that's one of the most important things I think that people need to understand mm-hmm. that it's a compounding game. And once you make more money with trading mm-hmm. for a few months, mm-hmm. and why do I say a few months? Because you can have a, a, um, Winning month on luck. Yeah. But prove it to yourself for a few months. And I know for a fact, I'm trading for four years now. So actively day trading, mm-hmm. not, not investing, but day trading. I know that <coughs> I can be on a winning streak now for four years. Yeah. But it can be flipped next year. Maybe next year I won't be in this winning streak again. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the whole thing. Uh, there, um, there's a saying that um, I'm humble enough to say that I can lose it all. Mm-hmm. But I'm confident enough to say that I can make it all back again. Mm. That's that's my thing. I think that's the power of actually having the skill set. Exactly. You know, it's the same with the sales, right? Yeah. So like, it's just you adjusting know, it. Exactly. Yeah. So like, but the thing is, if you, God forbid, anything happens, you mm-hmm. lose all your account. Whatever happens, you know. Yeah. Um, 
you can go back to sales like this. Yeah. You know, because you have the skill set, you develop that, you exactly. have that, and you can do that anytime. Yeah. And that's why I believe anyone who doesn't go to college or university should really look at sales. A hundred percent. Because that's a skill set again that can at any time be deployed. Yeah, and, and the it biggest be, benefit is mm-hmm. it, if you work on commission, mm-hmm. you need to work your ass off. Yeah. If mm-hmm. if I worked at at a restaurant, for example, and and I get seven euros an hour. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if I'm running, sweating, or if I'm just sitting on my phone. Oh, yeah, you want coffee? Yeah, give me 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But if you're on sales, I, I I can stand there in the beginning in the beginning of the streets. Yeah, no, I'm 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 not going to work. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to scroll. I'll find, but I won't earn anything. Mm-hmm. That's the whole problem. What would you say though? Because as you said, <laughs> like when you went in there, people were like three to four sales, yeah. know, three to four sales. What would you say the difference that you had? Yeah. When you came in and did eight and 12 and 13 you know, very quickly mm-hmm. compared to those people who've been sat there doing three to four a day. The skilled challenge is finally here. Enjoy the lowest profit targets in the industry through our skilled challenge, which is only requiring a 6% profit target. Yes, you heard that right. Not only that, but enjoy 85% profit split as well as a 125% challenge free refund, all part of the best product on the market. You get to choose your drawdown between 8 or 10% for our toggle option, so you choose how much drawdown you'd like. Take advantage of the skilled challenge today. Just a different mindset. Mm. It's, it's just about, I, I always want more. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter, like, like, like I always think, okay, mm-hmm. the average people think this. Let, let me think 10 times bigger. Yeah. I sat down with my lawyer, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, he he wanted to grow his company and he said, yeah, and, and I'm going to hire three people this year. So I said to him, okay, re, 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 just read that book and see if you can make it 30. And he was like, yeah, wait, no, but if I want to make it 30, I, it's going to be a whole different business. I said, yes, that, that's the whole thing. Because most of the time, mm-hmm. when uh, you think 10 times bigger, you will see that you need to play a whole different ball game. Yeah. But why not start with that ball game directly? And, and you will see most of the time, that's a much easier game. Mm-hmm. Why? Because there are way many more people looking for the average things than for the big things. So it's way less competition, I would say. Definitely. No, I love that. And it's interesting. So it's like the limiting beliefs. These people were there like three, four trade, uh, four, three, four trades, three, four sales. Yeah. Right. That's good. That's great. Yeah. But then when you come in, did you see any correlation though? When you started to hit the eight and twelves and the bigger numbers, mm-hmm. did everyone else's increase slightly? Because now they saw what was possible. Yeah. And and they want to learn from you. Mm. They, they want to walk with you, mm-hmm. stand next to you when you're knocking the door, see what you're doing. You, yeah. and, they w- and they will see that the only f- difference is is when I made a sale, I just run straight to the, straight to the next door mm. to do another one and another one and, and another one. Well, actually, uh, they had four at the beginning of the day already. Mm-hmm. And then they said, oh, reach the target. Now I'm mm-hmm. going to chill. But I always wanted one one step higher. Mm. So that I always need to run. Mm-hmm. That's that's a thing for me. I mean, did you, you obviously took that mindset into your trading. So trading-wise. Yeah. We had that loss, yeah. Um, and then you, you know, went back to the drawing board, mm-hmm. um, learned from uh, you know, in terms of ranges mm-hmm. and uh, deviations. Mm-hmm. And so, what was the scaling like for you then? You know, in terms of your trading journey. What do you mean the scaling? In terms of like uh, going from obviously fourteen k loss mm-hmm. to then obviously you know full time and, yeah. and consistently being profitable. Um, back back in the days, uh, mm-hmm. and 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 then we're then we're going to to talk about crypto too. Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking way, way more in, into trading and both crypto mm-hmm. because I, I knew, okay, crypto probably is going to do something. So learned about crypto and do you know Luna? Yes. Okay. So I, I was one of the first investors of Luna. Oh, wow. I bought it at 26 to uh, 28 cents. Mm-hmm. Ro- then I wrote it all up to uh, 110. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's quite a return. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened uh, for the, for the people who who don't know mm. Luna had his own stable coin. Yes. So I was a Luna maxi, made life changing money on Luna. Mm, yeah. Uh, and and that's the thing. So my my whole trading journey went along with my l- profits of Luna. Yeah. So I it went ha- hand in hand, just mm-hmm. just together. So made a lot of money. Um, on the investing side and on the trading side, yeah. because now I was trading Luna too. But what happened every time when I made money on Luna or on trading, I put it in their stable coin in UST. Mm-hmm. So when I cashed out, I first cashed out on 30 
a big bag. Then I cashed out on 110. But everything in UST. Mm -hmm. What happened? I thought, you know what, hey, made some money. Let me just go and invite my family to Paris. Went to Paris for a weekend. So I was in Dubai, went to Disneyland mm -hmm. for a weekend. Left all my things here. I was like, hey, what is going to happen? I'm rich. Don't care. Boom. Family, Paris, no work. I literally, I made a post on Instagram where I said, mm -hmm. not going to open trading view or charts this weekend. Mm -hmm. Bro, listen. I was standing there in the line of the roller coaster, happy with the family, enjoying Disneyland. I'm a little kid. I love Disneyland. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. What happened? <laughs> listen, what happened? So I got a call from, from a friend of mine, but mm -hmm. he always calls me for work. I told him I don't want to focus on work. Mm. But you, you know what? Let me pick up. Yo, Camille, yo. <laughs> yo, what's up? Did you see Luna? Did, did you sold? I was like, what? Did you sold your, your, your UST? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Bro? I'm in Disneyland. I'm going in a roller coaster right now. Mm. He said, bro, you're in a whole different roller coaster. Trust me, open up Trading View. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> what happened? Boom. Open up trading view, see UST depact. So instead of my UST wasn't that one dollar anymore, it wasn't mm. eighty cents. Yeah. I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, because I couldn't do anything. It's I couldn't sell. There. Yeah. It's all. It was all in Dubai. Couldn't do anything. So I was there for 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 two more days. Whole day trading view. Couldn't focus on on anything. Disneyland anymore. Yeah. The only thing that I remember from Disneyland is the sounds. Bro, I was I was stressing, yeah. and then you hear all of the Disney sounds. I can tell you, bro, you're crying. Traumatized. It, it traumatized. <laughs> Literally, every time when I scroll, minus 50k, minus 70k, boom, every scroll. I was like, okay, whew, what is the game plan now? Yeah. Then how, I, how much did you lose in that? In one day, 2.4 million. Yeah. That 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 was, and that's in one day, because there was another day and another day. It was three days in total. How much did you lose in total? More than three, but that that was <sighs> the, the first day was the biggest day. How old were you then? Yeah, it was uh, two years ago. The 19th? Now, yeah, 19th, <sighs> 20 -ish. Yeah, but but like I said, bro, 19, mm -hmm. who who cares? Like, I'm very young still. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I picked up one of, one of my favorite trading books. Maybe you know it, Market Wizards. Yes, yeah, the okay. interview with uh, yeah. all the traders, yeah. Okay, so that 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 literally is, is is one of the most important books for me in trading. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it is uh, a book with interviews of the biggest traders out yes. there. What did I learn from the book? Is that almost every trader lost almost all of his capital more than seven to ten times. Wow. What did I know? I, boom, I have eight more to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, eh, I'm 19. Mm. Just, just uh, secure this spot. Mm -hmm. Now I have eight more to go. Let, mm. let's see when it happens. And that's when I just went, went, went back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. um, there was a whole gaming narrative still, and I wasn't completely broke. Let me put it like that. Of course, I, I had some different coins that I invested into. Yeah. So. I wasn't completely broke. I, I can act now like I was uh, like it, it was my biggest downfall and mm -hmm. everything. I wasn't completely broke. I still had some money, but mm -hmm. it wasn't. Uh, uh, that was the majority. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I think I, I would say 80 to 90 percent of yeah. my money mm -hmm. was inside of you uh, inside of UST. But why? Because every time when I made profits, you obviously sell it into that. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. because I thought that's my safe haven. Yeah, yeah. So every profit that I make, every trading profit went straight into that one. So that happened. And then I, yeah, 10% 10, 10 of a big amount of money is still money. Mm -hmm. What did I do? Jumped into whole new narratives, mm -hmm. made it back with that narratives and with the whole trading game. Mm -hmm. But because in the trading, like, like it was the beginning of the, uh, of, of the bear market. Yeah. And because of Trader SC, I knew finally how to short the market exactly <laughs> no more just uh, scamming the 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 exams no mm -hmm. now i finally knew how to short the markets and adjust my strategy to mm -hmm. it so literally nailed the the the, the whole bear market mm -hmm. still still doing this mm -hmm. <laughs> but but there, there there was a big lesson though that was the difference between a bear market yeah. and 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 the whole sideways so be mm -hmm. 
a downtrend and a sideways trend. Yes. That was a very humbling experience for mm. me too. Because I was literally, bro, I was enjoying the whole shorting thing. Shit posting on Instagram. Because all of the, the, the people, they... they um, all like of the other influencers, opinion, yeah, yeah. they were saying, yeah, no, it's just a dip. And I was the whole time, no, it's going to this level, then it's going down again. Mm -hmm. Bro, it, it was good for my ego. Yeah. Until it went to a sideways market and I was still shorting. Yeah. There you learn some, some, some new lessons some again. Lessons, and, yeah. and that's when you can adjust your strategy again. Definitely, man. Woof. Yeah. Woof. <laughs> yeah. I knew the thing is when you're with crypto people, as far as I know, every single one of them will have a story where they've made a lot of money Bro. and they lose a lot of money. What 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 I al always say and for the people who who, who uh may sound a bit weird, but in crypto you you, you get a hundred K for free. Mm -hmm. And then the question is can you keep that hundred K? I can tell you I didn't met anyone who kept who kept it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one. Yeah. You will always just lose it. But that's good because then, then, then you can see, mm -hmm. okay, who will call the market a scam and who will actually learn from it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Would you say though, now that you've had a, you know, losing like three million, yeah. you know, or even like the two point one in a day, for yeah. example, when you're trading now yeah. and you lose, I don't know, what sort of risk do you do per trade, for example? Two percent. Uh, how much would that be in dollars, for example? Or, or let's say, <coughs> let's say back then. Yeah. Back then, you know, after the after the um the crash and stuff, how much would a risk be then? It, it was still around ten k. Yeah, ten k. Yeah. yeah. So, with ten k risk after losing two point one million, yeah. was the ten k? Were you kind of more desensitized no. to it? Listen, there's one thing you 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 need to understand for me, and mm -hmm. that's I'm a degenerate fuck. <laughs> I, I I really don't care. Mm -hmm. That's that's why I said, bro, no one will 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 tell you just give me eight more. Mm -hmm. I'm in this game for a long time. Mm -hmm. Give me eight more. Re really don't care. Mm -hmm. So. One of my biggest losses after that, trading wise, yeah. was on uh, I I put in a long on Dogecoin. Yeah. But what happened? That that was an experience I didn't had before. So I went in with 70k. Mm -hmm. What happened? Uh, risk all was fine. So I was I was walking with my dogs. It was a scalp trade. Mm -hmm. What happened? I wanted to close it. Maintenance. I was like, what the fuck? It was on Qcoin. Mm -hmm. Qcoin maintenance. I was like, what the fuck is maintenance? I wanted to close the trade, mm -hmm. didn't close the trade. Market was reversing. The walk with my dog turned out to be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it said maintenance. And, and I was like, no, I just want to close trade, no maintenance things. Then it went to my stop loss. I thought, I'm so happy that I put in a stop loss. Boom, went straight through the stop loss. I was like, what is happening, bro? Mm. What happened? I, I didn't ha had enough sleep. Qcoin said it two days before we are going in maintenance from then to then and it was during fomc both didn't look at it mm -hmm. it was just a scalp trade while i'm walking with, with my dogs i was like eh, it's fine it wasn't fine mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's God another damn. one how much did you lose on that one seven no no just just 70k it, 70K, yeah, yeah yeah still a lot of money there. yeah know? yeah but like what i'm saying in terms of like not that you were better in terms of risk management or mm -hmm. stuff like that what i mean is like when you have these losses because of your, obviously the substantial amount, yeah. two point one million, for example, yeah. suddenly losing seventy k, let's say, yeah. does it you know in no. terms of the pain or no. the frustration or or you know the you sort get of fear and greed? Yeah, I does just uh, the only happen? thing that I hear is Disney dance. <laughs> Disney what about dance dogs sounds. now as well? Dogs are gone. <laughs> No, 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 no. I still have them. I still have them. No, no. For me, it's the Disneyland sound. Wait till you have kids and they're playing the, the, I know, the Disney I know. movie. No, no, They are playing with... Q Daddy, what is Q-Coin? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Oh, man. No, but um, it's interesting, though. Because I think it's, it is interesting, as you said, that one, obviously, looking at the pattern of the other traders. Yeah. Seeing, actually, that the average is... The you know, majority of people go through these experiences. Yeah. Um, and then it being accepting of it. So like, but in terms of risk management, money management, then, mm -hmm. so obviously, you know, you understand yourself as being a degenerate and yeah. being open to risk and, yeah. and welcoming these you know, crazy uh, yeah, losses, yeah, right? Yeah. But how do you handle that in terms of you, you know, obviously you're young, so you're able mm -hmm. to as well in yeah. one degree, but obviously you want to be able to, I would imagine want to still keep your lifestyle, uh, whatever that may be. You may want to still, you know, be able to obviously afford to enjoy yourself to whatever degree mm -hmm. that may be as well. Um, so how do you balance that? Do you have investments? Do you have thing, you know, capital that you have to one side or? It may sound very weird, mm -hmm. I, I know. Uh, and a lot of people told me like after this, you, because a, 
a, a, a lot of my friends, for mm -hmm. example, there's one friend, Luke Hallman, if you're watching this, he always said to me, listen, Camille, just diversify. Mm -hmm. Buy some real estate, just, just diversify. I said, oh, fuck you. <laughs> I, will, I will go all in in this crypto thing. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I will just go all in. So then after, after my loss, he said, okay, whew, you finally learned your lesson. I mm -hmm. said, no, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't learn it. I will just go all in again. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm still doing, to be honest. Really? I'm, I'm, if I lose the lifestyle, uh, you, you maybe saw it on all my stories. Yeah, I, I, uh, I spent, a, a, I spent a, 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 a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I don't care if, 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 if that's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Because I know when I fall back, Okay, maybe I'm broke for four to five months. We'll make it back again. Mm -hmm. Don't care. Let me eat some noodles for a few months. Don't mm -hmm. care. Boom. We'll, we'll, we'll make it back. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care how in this game, but in the trading game and in, in the crypto space, especially, there are so many fucking opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't care. Can it happen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then I will just think one, one more of. Do you think your that mindset allows yeah. you to be successful? Though? Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Because do you feel like the people who are scared and the people who maybe, uh, you know, really risk manage, really diversify, really do these things, do you feel like they... They don't they see might... the longer time frame. Mm. Like if I look at it uh, from, from, from a objective point of view, mm -hmm. who was 17, uh, 19 and lost more, more, more than a couple of million of dollars? Mm. That, that's a lesson for me mm -hmm. that I paid more, more than a million dollars for. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed. <laughs> Literally, that's how I see it. Mm. I'm I'm very happy that I was able to 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 stand in, in that position. Yeah. And I know until I'm f when I'm 30, that's when I'm going to to say to myself, you know what? Maybe it's time to slow a little bit down. Yeah. But I know in nine years I will learn a fuckload of lessons. Yeah. So do you feel what's your goal though? Like in terms 2 .4 of 2.4 billion. 2.4 billion. Yeah. Why why so specific? <laughs> uh, yeah. That's that's 24 is my favorite number. Okay. So and every time wh when I say 2.4 billion, mm. people get scared. Mm. People are always like, no, that's too crazy. Mm. That's what I like. How do you feel you'll get there? Just this game, crypto game. You mean the crypto game? 100%. Will... Wow. Do you feel like crypto, just the crypto investing and trading game or businesses just, within it? Just what, what I'm doing now. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. But it will take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm not going to do this overnight. It mm -hmm. it will take a very long time. Well, you got time. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, mm -hmm. I will learn a few more lessons in mm -hmm. this in, in this whole game. What what do you feel in terms of like you know um, <clears throat> the opinions people have of like cryptos upon uh, not upon Ponzi sorry it's like a bubble you know just go yeah you know what what do you what are your thoughts as someone who's in you know, in the crypto space, yeah. making money from the crypto space, losing money from the crypto space. So most of the people who said it to me mm -hmm. are, are the people who made, who like. got the 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 hundred thousand for free mm -hmm. and lost it. Yes, that's when they say it's a gamble. Okay. Well, actually, if you look into it, you will mm -hmm. see. What are your thoughts in terms of uh, CBDCs? That's that that, in my opinion, is the only thing that's really dangerous. Mm. But it can go two sides. Mm -hmm. So one people one side is the people who, who will adapt mm -hmm. and just will say, hey, the governments, they, they, they have the best best for us. Mm -hmm. hey, it's all fine. Internet banking. Oh, yes, finally mm -hmm. can be that. Or people will finally say, you know what? Hey, something is stinky about this business. Mm. Let me try this crypto thing. Mm. So this can be the start for crypto or, may, or maybe the end. But why the end? Because they can remove the on and off ramps. Mm -hmm. So the whole crypto uh, thing itself, it will stay. But the whole problem is when you can't buy it anymore or, or when you can't withdraw your yeah. money anymore, what are you going to do with it? Mm. Then you need to, to go to some place. Yes, do you accept crypto? Yeah, I can mm -hmm. go to the supermarket right yeah. now and say, listen, I only have money in crypto. Mm -hmm. The whole CBDC thing, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. They will say, okay, fuck off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's a problem. It's true. No, no, it's true. So, so CBDCs, by the way, uh, it's crypto, yeah. um, crypto, uh, central bank central, digital yeah. currencies. Yeah, just so in case anyone's wondering. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, because I hear that a lot. I hear that when they when they first started to see the news announcements and yeah. some uh, some of the banks talking about it, some of the presidents and prime ministers talking about it. Yeah. It's dangerous stuff, especially when they talk about being able to pro, you know, it's programmable, programmable being yeah. able to restrict people's purchases and stuff. But um, I think that the trick from what I hear of how they will try to deploy it, what's funny is I don't really hear about it now. Yeah. This was like 
during yeah, COVID times around stuff. That's the most scary time if you don't mm. hear about it. Yeah, this is true. Very if true. you hear about it, it's safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because then people are looking at it and, yeah. and, and then we know, okay, yeah, people will speak up about mm -hmm. it. When you don't hear about it, boom, that's, that's, when, that's when it really gets yeah, scary. Yeah, that's true. Because the essence of how, or the sort of premise of how they will get people to accept it is they will create a universal basic income. Yeah. So like essentially like everyone gets a thousand, you know, of this yeah. currency per month You will own nothing, nothing and be happy. Yeah. 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 And it's so true. Have you ever seen, um, it's a movie called In Time. It's uh, Justin Timberlake and then the, the other actress. But essentially, instead of currencies, yeah. it's time. Yeah. On the, and it's, there's like a clock on their wrist. Yeah. Right? On their forearm. And essentially, everything is transferable in yeah. time. But the rich obviously have millennia. Like yeah. They live yeah. forever. The poor are always chasing and they're, they're, the, the things that they purchase are going up in price every single day in time. Yeah. Right, so it's um, there's it's quite an a similar uh, episode on Black Mirror. Yes, with yeah, the yeah. point system. Yes, yes, yes. That's what that's what we are all already doing, in my mm -hmm. opinion, with social media. Mm -hmm. Well, Be that's the social credit score system, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But what what is the difference between that and your whole Instagram page mm -hmm. or your whole social media yeah, presence? It's true, and it's true. And then you see it as well, though. Like if you don't support a certain thing, if you don't yeah. say a certain thing, you don't Boom, be a certain followers way. go down. Yeah, and you followers interact with another person. Yeah. It's a dangerous or game. you go to a club somewhere mm -hmm. you didn't leave a good impression mm -hmm. people will film you boom now you're on twitter mm -hmm. all of your points go down mm -hmm. it's it's the whole social media game is 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 that is that that, that, that black system. mirror thing yeah. when you're doing well boom now you get free flights now you can get discounts it's literally and when and when you did something wrong now you're blocked from everything mm -hmm. look at kanye west for example mm -hmm. couldn't even uh, get into his own bank accounts again mm -hmm. While people think, yeah, no, but he's a billionaire. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, fine. But if you can't go in your bank account, what mm -hmm. are you going to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're blocked from everything. It's true. It's true. So as someone who wants to be a billionaire, then, yeah. right? Uh, and will become a billionaire, right? Um, are you planning or planting those? Well, you're planting the seeds in terms of making it happen. But mm -hmm. are you making the plans and learning about the infrastructure that that requires? Yeah, but first I need to learn a lot more to to actually enter the business. Mm. I want to learn more about the business. Mm -hmm. I want to learn more from the billionaires themselves. Mm -hmm. I now met two. Really? Yeah. But Did you meet them here? Yeah, in yeah. Dubai. In the what are your thoughts in regards to Dubai? Uh, we really like it, mm -hmm. but now I'm here for three to four years and I'm kind of done with it. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I'm from Amsterdam. Yes. In Amsterdam, not everything is perfect. Yes. In Amsterdam, but what I like from it is you can walk through red light. You can just do whatever you want. If you're in traffic and someone uh, is annoying, you can put up your middle finger and <laughs> say, hey, fuck off. You can do all of the things. Mm -hmm. In Dubai, bro, I'm standing at the light and I'm like, I need to wait. I'm not, I'm not going to cross the line, you know? Really? When, when I see someone annoying in Dubai, I need to shut my mouth. Mm. That's something I'm... I'm I, you struggle with. Yeah. I, I'm craving for mm. it to just do it again, you know? <laughs> so now I uh, I will stay here for two more months. Yes. And then I'm going to try Florence. Florence, Italy? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try Budapest. Yeah, Romania? No, no, no. H Hungary. Hungary, sorry. Hungary, yeah. I'm wrong. See, my geography is terrible. <laughs> I've exposed myself. This is terrible. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I am going to try uh, Paris or London. Oh, oh. London. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I... I think that that place is like like now. I, I just realized what you've been saying this time. Paris is Paris, right? Yeah. Not terrible. Thought, no, this is, <laughs> where's this exotic Disneyland I never heard of? This was like, but yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. So. Um, I think you would love London. Yeah. If you love that stuff, being able to swear at everyone like London's yeah. the best place for you is chaotic. Yeah, but here it's you crazy. Have the safety. Mm -hmm. but yes. 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 So yes, so yeah. if I want to live my my luxury lifestyle, yeah, I love it here. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to 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 live a luxury mm -hmm. lifestyle. I with. This thing, I will put it off. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. I will just have this thing who tells me how <laughs> shit I sleep. <laughs> totally fine. Mm -hmm. I will walk in a frack suit and make money. Mm -hmm. I really don't care. Mm -hmm. For me, I just want to be myself. Mm -hmm. And I know for for here, now it's fun. Eh, enjoying the luxury stuff again. Yeah. This is just for networking a good place. Exactly. But would you say the networking is probably the highest here? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Because do you feel like if you... I feel like you're the type of character that anywhere you go, you could meet people. In the like the billionaires, for example. This week, free mm. people. Yeah, that's what I mean. Free coffees with people who I met in the elevator. Mm -hmm. 
literally. <laughs> so that's that's. And do you feel like you can't really do? Not that you can't, but yeah. the opportunity isn't really available in other places in the world. I can, but most of them mm -hmm. won't have have the same mindset. Yes. Now you are in in a, at a place mm -hmm. where everyone is already achieving mm. or going in the same direction as you want. Yes. That's it for me, and that and mm. and that's people who I want to drink some coffee with. Mm. So do you feel like it's a good place to just for a, whether it's a short period of time or not, it's a good place to be able to accelerate, mm -hmm. be able to network and yeah. grind. Um, but in terms of maybe long term for someone like yourself or just long term for some, a lot of people out there it might mm -hmm. not be the place, like yeah. the, the base. Um, because I, I get this feeling, I haven't moved here yet, but I've traveled a bunch of times now and I get this feeling like I enjoy it, but I don't think I could enjoy it for 10 years, Yeah, you know, straight. Yeah, now uh, uh, after three years, like, like not three years straight, because mm -hmm. I, I live in Turkey in Amsterdam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I why I, Turkey? I just love it. Mm. I I go to Turkey now for eighteen years. Wow! And it was always was it a dream to just call it home, mm. you know? Because now I I most of the time stayed there for for three weeks, four four weeks, but I always wanted to extend. Yeah. And that's when uh yeah when I said very early, okay, you know what this. I, I, now I can finally call it home. Mm -hmm. So it was ju just a dream, but it's yeah. more in the summer. With the way that the Turkish uh, lira is going, you're probably a billionaire already. There, <laughs> <laughs> you're already the two point four. Let's Literally, go. for 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 two years straight, uh -huh. I I said to myself every time, just short it. <laughs> but but then I was like, no, 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 can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's crazy. What's happening? That's crazy, man. Yeah. But um, let's talk into the the trading side a bit more. So. In regards to strategy wise, right? Yeah. So we talked about deviation, but like, obviously I'm on the FX side. Yeah. You're on the crypto side. Yeah. You guys have seven days opportunity, uh, 24 hours 24 a day, seven, hours, yeah, yeah. which obviously has its benefits, has its negatives, no doubt. Yeah. But do you have to operate with an edge, like a very specific system in terms of to have profitability? It's it's more the mental game. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's exactly the same in Forex. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can show you my, my strategy right now, mm -hmm. everything about it. Mm -hmm. But if your mindset isn't there, you will lose money. Mm -hmm. Same goes if you if you show your your strategy where you made money from for two years already mm -hmm. to a random guy and he doesn't have his mindset at the right place, mm -hmm. you will lose money. Mm -hmm. But would you say <coughs> that, you know, that's true, 100%, I agree with that. But in terms of your strategy, is it something that is fixed? Yeah. You know? As in like, yeah. I need to see X, Y, and Z exactly. and then... ABC I, and I can execute. I always say I'm just a bitch to my sister. <laughs> yeah, l literally. And 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 in my uh, I did a live stream in my private community. Mm -hmm. What happened? I was inside of a, a, a long. Mm -hmm. So my long said, "Now you really need to exit." Mm. I, thought, oh, eh? I, I want to stay in. I I I typed it's it's got the bunker my 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 own channel. All right, my system tells me I, I need to exit. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm going to do it. Huh? I need to listen, mm -hmm. not to my gut feeling. Boom! Mark tank to the downside. I was like, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. Yeah. And and that's the whole thing. Like when you have a system mm -hmm. and and you adjust it so many times that it works, you can just trust your system. Mm. And when you don't have to to trust on your own, we are humans and we always have have some different kind of mm. emotion involved. If it's uh, and, and there are way, way many different emotions. If mm -hmm. you, for the people who, who are watching, if you want to have a good book about, or my fav favorite books about emotion is um, Mastering Market Psychology. Mm -hmm. Or now Ma Mastering Trading Psychology. Mm -hmm. One of the best books out there, 100%, about how your um, mindset works during trading. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many uh, different kind of mindsets. Mm -hmm. For example, what, what I said in the beginning, the mindset of, yeah, no, but I can't get groceries from this money. Yes. That's one. But but there you have the other mindset. No, wait, but if I am wrong on this trade, I'm wrong now for free trade. So that mm -hmm. means that I'm a bad trader. Mm. There are so many kinds of, of, of different things. For example, if I see people journaling in the beginning, yeah. what happens? They will see, oh, no, but, 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 but my previous six trades were wrong. Yeah. I'm such a bad trader. Oh, oh no! You know what? No, now I now I I need to enter uh, exit this trade very early because then I finally have a winner. Mm -hmm. I would say in the beginning, don't journal. Mm -hmm. Just look at your trades and, then, and 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 stop looking at the past trades. Just when you're done done with, done with a trade, mm -hmm. see what you've learned from the trade mm -hmm. because 
that's what I saw from my own experience and my own group uh, a lot in the beginning. Yeah. The people who journaled in the beginning were, were the people who were making the most mental decisions in the beginning. Yeah. Cause is it, do you think it's because they can see the data and then they can see the patterns? They will, sometimes in the beginning you have a losing streak and, mm -hmm. and even uh, like, like experts, mm -hmm. they have losing streaks as well. But this is something people don't, don't want to believe. Mm -hmm. They are seeing guys on social media, crazy Lambos, all, all of the things, mm -hmm. but they don't know that it's very common for a good trader mm -hmm. to have a bad month too, or even two months or yeah. sometimes three months. Mm -hmm. But, but they won't, and, and that's why Market Wizards for me yeah. was an eye opener, mm -hmm. especially with losing it all. It, that, that book literally saved me from saying, I'm going to quit this game. Yeah. Why? Because I know it's all part of the game. Mm. That's the thing. And so what, did it help you to sort of dissolve those emotions and say, look, this 100%. is normal, yeah. if anything. And then when you see... Are you an emotional trader? I have been in the past, yeah. less so nowadays. I feel like what you said as well, like having that income helped. Mm -hmm. I was very emotional when I had no money. Yeah. I was very emotional when I kept trying to do the whole like groceries and life from trading. Yeah. But then once I really focused on, okay, let me make money, let me get out of debt, and let me just focus on the skill set, like doing the journaling and, and focusing on the key aspects. And yeah. as you said earlier, like, you know, doing those repetitions, building that that time, you know, that consistency, that compounding of knowledge. Yeah. That's when things change and, and the emotions really start to dip and over time dip, dip, dip more yeah. and more. Uh, but I was a very emotional trader in the beginning. Um, and even for a good number of years, I, I spent about three years, three and a half years of just psh, gambling, just, yeah. degeneracy. And, you know, I, I would load up like 100 pounds, 500 pounds every like week or two weeks, yeah. whatever I had. Yeah, I'm but if you it. had the stress with, yeah, I, I cannot get groceries from mm -hmm. this money, of course. Mm -hmm. Like, then the only thing you will do, like, then it's no difference between a casino. Exactly, yeah. People will 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 go to a casino and think, oh, mm -hmm. this one needs to hit, otherwise mm -hmm. I can't eat tonight. Mm -hmm. Because they will get their last 50 euros. Because yeah. the thing is, I didn't need that. I, I had some, I had the money to do that, for example. Mm -hmm. But I was definitely putting in money I couldn't afford to lose, yeah. in the sense that I, you know, I didn't have savings. So yeah. I should have put that money in savings first and just focus on demo trading, simulator trading, yeah. you know, learning, you know? Are you a fan of dem de demo trading? Um, I'm not a fan of it in the sense that, you know, I feel like you should do it for a, a, fo a reason, right? Mm -hmm. You should do it when you have no money. Yeah. You should do it to just learn about how to buy, sell, how to, yeah, you know, see way. some data, see some stats whilst you're learning. Just to warm up. But as, yeah, as fast as possible, when the time is right, when you have money and you have your skill set, straight to life right because i don't i'm not i'm a, not a big fan of back testing yeah. i think that it's not a waste of time essentially you can data collect mm -hmm. but i feel a lot of people trick themselves into thinking they have a winning system yeah. because of back testing yeah. uh, results but i feel like there's, there's no correlation between back testing results and live results because yeah. there's no emotion yeah but pe people don't understand that live testing on the 15 mm -hmm. seconds should work too <laughs> that's what i do mm -hmm. literally and how, how i learned it was just trading on the 15 seconds chart. Wow. It's really fucking degenerate, but it mm -hmm. worked. <laughs> <laughs> so do you use the seconds then? Yeah. Really? Yeah. But when I'm scalping, so when you see my, my little time lapse on 3 a.m., 4 a.m., mm -hmm. that's when I'm scalping. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what, that was my next question, actually. Like, what's your routine like? You know, because you hear about, you know, wake up 5 a.m. Yeah. And, uh, you know, cold shower, all this stuff. Yeah. What, what is your routine like? Okay, so I, I had some phases, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, in the Netherlands, for example, I wake up at 4 a.m., mm -hmm. take an ice bath, mm -hmm. but I'm, that's it. So no, no more weird pill stuff, no, just ice bath, make a cup of coffee and just work the whole day. Mm. <laughs> and I'm not, not the guy who will focus on sleep every, every day. For me, it's just, boom, ice bath, the only reason why I take it. I don't know about the health benefits. For me, it's just so uncomfortable <laughs> every morning mm -hmm. when I wake up at 4 a.m., I had two hours of sleep, like okay there we go sit in the ice bed boom it works like crazy L like i did ate coffee or something mm -hmm. now i'm awake now we'll get another coffee <laughs> <laughs> and then and, and and that's when i will just start mm -hmm. um i started scalping mm -hmm. uh, in the in in the beginning why because i think um every trade is a lesson yeah so yes of course you can start swing trading I in the beginning mm -hmm but uh, you will not learn many lessons. So what I knew for myself in the beginning, the more scalps I take, the more lessons that I take. So mm -hmm. I would recommend every beginner trader just start scalping wow. because you will learn so many lessons, mm -hmm. uh, everything about market structure. And if, if you look at it from a perspective, um, 
the time frame shouldn't be the biggest difference in in how your system works. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. So uh, if you uh, if if you look at at, at a chart r r right now, so mm -hmm. if I show you a chart uh, and I put my hand on the time frame, mm -hmm. your system will 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 be probably the same, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. Just start scalping. See if your system works. Mm -hmm. Does it work on scalping? Mm -hmm. Are you making profits on scalping? Boom, that's when you're going to would day trading. You, yeah, yeah. Would you say though that they have to be able to take on board the, just the, the slight differences, you know, in terms of the time frame? You know? yeah, yeah, but uh, scalping, in my opinion, is the hardest one. Yeah. So yeah. why not start with the hardest one, learn mm -hmm. about deviations, mm -hmm. get stopped out a lot of times, learn how to manage those mm -hmm. stops. That's when you go to day trading and it mm -hmm. will become more easy. Mm -hmm. But that's when you need to look at news events, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. And then you learn more about the news event mm -hmm. things. Then you're going to make the step to swing trading. Mm -hmm. So now I'm a swing trader. And the only reason why I'm scalping is because just uh, I want to have some more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just just get the feeling again. Mm -hmm. Be, because I, I've been swing trading now for what is it around eight months or something. Yeah. So for now, I, I, I just want some more action again. Yeah, That's the only reason why I'm scalping again. But but I, I would say just make that steps first mm -hmm. instead of swing trading because you don't have a lot of time. If you don't have a lot of time, just start. For example, when I was working my sales job, mm -hmm. I, I, I was a manager. So I started at nine in the morning mm -hmm. until 12 in the evening. Mm -hmm. What happened? Okay, I knew I wanted to learn more about trading. Mm -hmm. So on 12, my trading job started. Four hours of trading, five hours of trading. That's when I was going to sleep. That that's why I I'm able to to to. Uh, that's what I think, at least. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy for mm -hmm. people who want to say now. Yeah, it's not healthy. I know, mm -hmm. but um, that's why why I'm used to 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 not getting a, a lot of sleep. Mm -hmm. I literally started after my job learning about trading, and that's the thing because I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. It's the, the 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 whole motivation part. Mm -hmm. And what do you think next then in terms of crypto? You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's people probably thinking that as well. We're currently, we've had the down market. We've kind of been ranging, sort mm -hmm. of moving sideways with, you know, with some pushes up, some pushes back down. Yeah. Uh, what's next? What, what are your so opinions? I have, um, I, I would say two different lives, the life of an investor and the life of a day trader. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for, for my day trading perspective, I, I don't look at the future of, of, of cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. I just play it level to level. Yes. So if I hear someone say, yeah, BTC will go to 100K, he's talking absolute bullshit. Why? Because never the, the price never even went to mm -hmm. 100k so you're talking about uncharted price territory mm -hmm. it's just to get people their emotions mm -hmm. same as people are talking yeah btc go, goes to 12k okay fun for you so that means that first you need to make make money on level 24 then you need to make money on level 20 then you, then you need to make money on level 18 first see if it goes to that levels mm -hmm. if you are finally at 12 that's when you hear me speak about 12. Mm -hmm. that's my day trading Mentality. Yeah. Me mentality. My other mentality is, uh, so, so my crypto mentality is, I don't care if I catch the absolute bottom. Mm. A, a lot of people, they, they will uh, miss the upcoming run mm -hmm. because they are waiting. So they will say, yeah, no, I will wait for uh, some coin Phantom or Solana mm -hmm. to go to this level. Mm -hmm. and, and then they are literally talking about a coin what is already down 95%. Yeah. So that means that if I invest right now, mm -hmm. my returns, if it goes back to an all-time high, and if we're talking about an upcoming bull run, it will go to an all-time high, is already 10x. Mm -hmm. It's already uh, life-changing gains. Mm -hmm. But people are saying, no, no, I want to nail the market. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll just wait two, two more months until it goes down. What, what will happen? Eventually, they will just be sidelined again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they will FOMO in again, and then they will... Make us money again, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Do you think it's literally just a cycle of uh, fear and greed? Yeah, constantly. but for me, like I said, I'm not here to, to, to catch the absolute bottom or mm -hmm. the absolute top. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just about, okay, what are decent returns? Mm -hmm. Do I think 10X is a fucking decent return? Yes, mm -hmm. I think. So do I invest now already? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's called DCA. Uh, dollar, dollar cost average. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I DCA now? Yes. Did I... Uh, DCA when BTC was at 17, 16? Mm -hmm. Yes. Am I up now more than 100%? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did the people wait for 12K? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are they now salty that the market needs to go down more? Mm -hmm. Yes, because they already missed the whole thing. And people are talking about uh, the, the, the next bull run. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, most of the altcoins, so coins other than BTC, 
are already up more than 5x, mm -hmm. six, uh, six, uh, 6x, since uh, since the bottom. Mm -hmm. But they will wait. Yeah. That's the They'll thing. miss out. Exactly. And then like you said, that leads to then the emotions of FOMOing in at higher yeah. prices, which then might be the question. When their barber is making money, <laughs> yeah, when yeah, their yeah. taxi driver is making is that, money. Is that like the red flag? That's always been the red flag for me. Whenever, when oh, you know, my family start asking me or when random people start mentioning it and you hear them, overhear them talking about it. Always. Yeah. When the ledgers are out of stock. Yeah. That's that's a sign. For is that me? <laughs> it's really weird, yeah. but 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 when I, uh, like in the Netherlands you have the cool blue, yeah, it's just an electronic shop. Mm -hmm. When I see that the ledgers are out of stock there, mm -hmm. boom, that's a sign for me. Okay. When when my taxi driver, for example, uh, my neighbor, yeah, he came up to me, did it, did a new shit about uh, about cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, bro, I just made four hundred k on this coin. I said, how much did you invest? A thousand. I said, bro, take profit. He said, no, this one is going to print me a few million. I said, bro, you already made enough money to 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 uh, to finance your house. Mm -hmm. It's done. No, I'm going to wait for a few million. Two weeks later, I said, are you a millionaire, bro? I even made a loss. Wow. I seen a guy. There's a very similar guy in in my hometown in Nottingham in England. Yeah. Same thing. Made a you know, in terms of profit. Yeah. You know, P and L on the screen a lot. Six figures, maybe going seven figures, but held it. Yeah. Um, which is interesting though, because like you said, you know, people can make the three hundred, you know, the the three hundred grand right yeah. that the market gives you, and then they'll lose it, and yeah. then it's a decision then. And I see the the people I've known who have done that. They always are just like I'm just holding it. I'm, I'm hoping it goes back. Yeah. you know but they're not learning in the Bank meantime holders. Yeah. yeah but they're not learning in the meantime versus like you said earlier those who get that 300 grand in front of them taken away yeah but then they decide to go in deeper and, and learn yeah you know, is that a common trait that you see amongst the, the successful people they 100%. go beyond what is necessary 100 mm -hmm. and um in terms of what is there any projects on your viewpoint for investing side the investing side i'm a very big fan of phantom phantom yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so for the people who are watching Take a deeper dive into Phantom. Mm -hmm. uh, what what I want to say to people, mm -hmm. uh, especially for 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 the the, the investing part, mm -hmm. I would say just look at the market caps when it comes down to taking profits. Mm -hmm. So the market cap, like how much money is in, is inside of the project. Yes. What, what what is very easy easy to see is most of the new projects that are popping off mm -hmm. um, are in a similar niche as a big one right now. So yes. in a top ten or mm -hmm. top twenty coin. Yeah, they are. They, they just want to make it better. Okay, yeah, yeah. What you can easily do is just compare the market caps with with each other. So let's say, for example, okay, um, someone wants to uh, beat Phantom in, in mm -hmm. what they do, mm -hmm. yeah? And they are on a good way. Look at their market cap, then look at the market cap of Phantom. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you look at the market cap of Phantom, you can see, okay, this is their, their, their potential right now. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they are better than Phantom, yeah, they first need to get the market cap of Phantom, and that is yeah. my first price target for for okay, this is what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. If it is performing better than, than Phantom, prob yeah. probably marketing wise uh, and 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 the coin wise, mm -hmm. and after that, of, of course, you will look: is there another big coin, mm -hmm. or is this now the first runner? Mm -hmm. So that's what I had with Luna, for example. Definitely. Yeah. And the reason why why I took uh, profits at 110, 112 mm -hmm. re re region was just because uh, technical. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What was your thoughts though in terms of you know lesson wise off the back of the Luna thing? Yeah. Um, you know now, do you hold capital in uh, stable coins still, or are you a bit more, a bit more? Uh, still stable coins. <laughs> still stable coins. <laughs> do you try and diversify at all in terms of or like put it elsewhere or no? You just have to put it on the line. <laughs> you have to put it on the line. Some Maybe in two years we will mm -hmm. sit here again. Don't have watches, <laughs> don't, don't have anything. A and, recap. <laughs> and I will tell you, listen, give me a few months. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then after a few months, people I wouldn't do doubt again. it. I wouldn't doubt it. But you know, um, but there's some exchanges do offer rather than stable coins, they have like, you know, uh, currency. So like yeah. uh, Kraken, I think yeah. they, they offer like uh, dollars, for example, yeah, and, and you wallets. Have BUSD. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, for Binance. Mm -hmm. But of course, they, then you need to trust an exchange. Yeah. And that is uh, centralized. Yeah. So in the, in the crypto game, you have centralized and decentralized. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a choice. Uh, yeah, exactly. What were your thoughts on FTX? Um, for me, I I did had had uh, 
in in the Netherlands, FTX was, wasn't that big. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I wasn't involved in the whole FTX thing. Mm -hmm. I just nailed the markets with the the. Uh, the way down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> for me, I I I, I yeah, only <laughs> made, 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 made made money on FTX. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, if I look at it, um, first of all, um, and I think I, I'm in a position to say this because I lost it all myself. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not one of the most smartest things you can do to to keep your money on a centralized exchange. Mm -hmm. So I kept my money decentralized, mm -hmm. but I still got fucked. Yeah, because of course I I wasn't um, with my um, laptop and everything. Yes. So that's the thing. If I was in Dubai, I I wouldn't lose the money. Yeah. Because I I could still sell. You just lose a little chunk. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Twenty percent. Fine. It's not hundred. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, so I. I could just sell it because mm -hmm. everything was decentralized. FTX, for example, different thing. It's centralized. So now people can say, okay, yeah, sorry, you can sell your coins. Mm -hmm. Or you can sell it, but you won't get it off the exchange. Yes. That's a big problem, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Definitely. Definitely. And I think we're coming towards the end of the podcast, though yeah. I feel like we could go all day, man. It's <laughs> really fun. Uh, we'll definitely do this again. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe in London, maybe yeah, wherever, anywhere like in the world. Plan. Yeah. I'm going to wait till like, there's a big crash or big movement. Then uh, that's why you will call me. Yeah, exactly. I'll call you and say, what happened? Did you win or lose? <laughs> like, whichever way, let's do it now. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, um, quick fire questions then, yeah. right? So the one, the reoccurring one that I ask every guest, yeah. and I'm interested to know yours actually, which yeah. is uh, if you can meet anyone in the past or present, Meet yeah, anyone? Yeah, meet anyone, famous yeah. or not, yeah. right? Who would it be and why? Mm. So, this is a hard one, bro. <laughs> Who would it be and why? The only question that got him. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Now you have me. Um, First thing that comes to your mind, like who, who jumps in there? So there's this book, mm -hmm. The Alchemist. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Where Santiago meets the, the, the guy, mm -hmm. him. You want to meet the alchemist? No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that though. I like that. What, what, I love the book. You know, the alchemist yeah. is one of my favorite books. It, it is my favorite book, mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. It's such a powerful one. I feel and, like. And I think everyone should read that book. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Because it's like, that's probably the first book I've read where it's like a self help book, if you will. But it's in such an amazing story. So you don't even feel like you're reading exactly. a self help book. It, it's not like mm. go go to the mirror mm. say that you're the man no yeah. <laughs> this is like now you can feel it in yourself do you feel like you had beginner's luck you know like from the alchemist you had beginner's luck in mm -hmm. trading in in the crypto space 100 percent. and then you had the testing moment you know the Bro, test so many testing <laughs> moments <laughs> i can tell you i had a lot of testing moments mm -hmm. and i think uh, for everyone who is watching this mm -hmm. be prepared for the testing moments and embrace them mm -hmm. so Instead of walking away from them, mm -hmm. be happy that that you got them. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I couldn't agree more. And um, a couple more questions then for you. So like, more like these ones, the hard ones. No, <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> ones like your biggest win. We talked about your biggest loss, right? Yeah. What What would be one notable win? You know that you can remember in terms of uh, you know a trade or an investment. Uh, many like um, the quickest one. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, three hundred forty k on trip. Really? How, yeah. how, long, how long did it take? Uh, so I entered it when I was in the um, hotel mm -hmm. in Budapest, went to the restaurant <laughs> in the taxi, maybe 10, 20 minutes. But I, I would never expect it. No, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. For me, it was literally, I was inside of the trade for, for maybe a uh, 50K profit. But I opened up my, my uh, phone when I was at the restaurant. What is happening? <laughs> I, I was like, what is happening? And it pumped crazy. And so it's closed. Yeah, that one. Wow. But when you experience those sort of numbers, you know, like 15 to 20 minutes, yeah. you know, six figure trades, yeah. what does that do to your mindset? Mm, so compared to my bigger goals, nothing. Mm. So that's it for me. I can make a, a, a lot of money right now, mm. but for me, it's just all part of the game and, and, and uh, money for lessons. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. There's one thing Andrew Tate said, right? Which yeah. uh, kind of resonated with me in terms of when he, he goes, when you have money, yeah. actually have money, like spending money and all this sort of stuff, it just becomes like something like nothing almost. Yeah. It's like when you go into the sort of the millions bracket and beyond, it's literally just like 0.1 what I have, yeah, decimals. It, 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 if I look at one of my one-on-one -on -one students, for mm -hmm. example, uh, he was the guy who said grocery money thing. Yeah. Uh, 
he has a lot of money now. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, listen, there's one thing that I want you to do. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you're going to say. I don't care about your uh, things. You, you need to do one thing. Mm -hmm. And that is chop off at least 20K mm -hmm. and spend it on everything mm -hmm. that you always wanted to. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. And it worked like crazy. Why? Because you you don't have, have any open things at, anymore that if you lose the money, yeah. you, you thought, oh, I could have bought this. I could have bought this. Yeah. I went inside of the Gucci store, bro, everything <laughs> that I always wanted to like there. There's one uh, r r rapper. His name is called Boof. Mm -hmm. And in the Netherlands, you have a YouTube platform. It's called One uh, One Zero One Bars. Mm. He had a Gucci tracksuit on. Bro, I saw it. And when I was younger, I told you, I, mm. would, I, would, I loved the streets and the whole gangster yeah. picture. Bro, I went inside of the Gucci store, bought it. But everything, literally everything that that I always wanted to, mm -hmm. and that's when you have it, when you actually see, okay, does it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. Pe people always want to say to people, yeah, uh, money doesn't buy happiness. Yeah, no, it won't make you happier. Mm -hmm. Let them experience it. Sell. Mm -hmm. Let them buy that that car first. Mm -hmm. Let them buy that Rolex first, mm -hmm. because they, they need to experience it themselves. I would be a a, a hypocrite to to tell you. Yeah, this Rolex doesn't. Uh, uh, it it will not ma make you happy. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will make them very, very fucking happy. Yeah. So I would say, if you made a lot of money, chop a bit off and buy whatever you like. He bought a plot of land in Greece what? with his family mm -hmm. and just all of the the smaller things mm -hmm. that he wanted to. And I told now he told me, it gave me so much rest be because you don't have to think about Not it chasing anymore. anymore. You have it, mm -hmm. and you wake up and you think. Whew, I'm really living my dream. Mm. Like uh, everyone who's watching this now probably is right now living some of the prayers that that he did two years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's something you won't un understand because you, we are constantly comparing ourselves. Yes, I love that. Very powerful lesson. And let's finish with this last one then. Yeah. Uh, in terms of a, a lesson for the people out there yeah. to progress, yeah. you know? And we're talking more, you can talk both mindset Mm -hmm. and trading yeah um you know what would you say as someone who's gone through the journey yourself and taught others as well yeah. what would you say like some of let's say top three key components or lessons that they can take away and and implement to progress okay so first of all you need a purpose mm -hmm. because if you have a purpose you don't have to look for motivation anymore and that's the thing a lot of people don't understand when i wake up at four mm -hmm. They say, yeah, how can you wake up at four? Yeah, how, how are you doing this? I have a purpose. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I know, okay, boom, I will wake up at four. I don't have to look for motivation. Mm -hmm. I know where I'm heading to and I know what I want. Mm -hmm. I don't have to look for it. So if you have a clear purpose, like like that's from the book from uh, Simon Sinek. Um, once the why is clear, the how is easy. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. First, see why, 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 why do you want to do this? Mm -hmm. Because a, a, a lot of people may sound fucked up, but... Um, the things that they want doesn't even uh, require a lot of money. Yeah. So for most people, their dream lives shouldn't uh, e e even cost a million dollars. Mm. Um, so that's one. The other one, I would say, learn to read and to implement. So mm -hmm. instead of reading to make a picture on, on your Instagram, I'm reading this book, mm -hmm. learn to implement. So mm -hmm. if you're reading uh, trading books like Trading in the Zone, uh, Mar Mar Market Wizards, or this one, mm -hmm. finish the book and try to implement it directly to your life. Mm -hmm. if, if you didn't implement it, it's just a waste of time. You yes. can watch Dora Explorer <laughs> if you want. Uh, like it will, have, it will have the same results. Mm -hmm. You need to implement something. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one is understand that uh, every trade is a lesson, if it's a good one or if it's a bad one. Mm -hmm. And that that lesson uh, needs to be learned for 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 your journey. Yeah. So for me, of course, I I, I had way way many um, chances to to say, hey, this is it. Mm -hmm. I'm quitting it. This mm -hmm. game is not for me. I'm still here. And every time you will see when you fall back, when you step up, you will mm -hmm. be a little bit higher than the previous one. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Love that. No, I love that. And I think people will hopefully. Again, it kind of comes back to the exact lesson you said. Implement that though. Yeah. Not just hear it. Because that's why I feel like some people are guilty of. They watch the podcast, hear all these incredible people and yeah. what their journeys. And that's all they're doing though. Collecting, yeah, collecting, we collecting. We live in an, in an information crisis mm -hmm. at the moment. Well, uh, the Alchemist, for example. Mm -hmm. 
yes, you can finish the book in two hours and and uh, and be done with it. Mm-hmm. But it's all about implementing it. Yes. So there's a big difference between reading and studying. Mm-hmm. I really studied the alchemist every every single part of it. Mm-hmm. I really studied market wizards mm-hmm. and i'm still picking it up if i fuck up right now mm-hmm. if i lose it all again I, w- I will need to read all all of the interviews again yes just as a ju- just to fresh it up yeah i love that yeah powerful powerful lesson that consistency in the the effort of greatness you know exactly like continuously regardless of failure success you keep going yeah Camille, I loved it. You know, it's an incredible podcast. I feel like sometimes the the surprising guests, the last minute guests, <laughs> the unknown, yeah. are, are the the most fun, and it's been really fun. Um, yeah, and we definitely will do this again, hundred percent. Whether here or anywhere, we'll yeah. do it again. But um, your links, any links you have, they will be in the description below. Sure. And uh, everyone, comment your biggest takeaway from this. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow over uh, Camille's pages too. And until next time, everyone, take care.